Despite Miz and Brooklyn doing everything they could to prevent it, I got the starring role in Rank and File 4. Red, on the other hand, wasn't so lucky. But I guess fighting with the lead actress during a casting session is generally frowned upon. Miranda, where are you? I'm in the spaceship's cockpit. Hurry, Bryce. We don't have much time before it launches. Your time's up, imposter. Cut! There's no henchman line in this script. You're just supposed to tackle him, and then he throws you off the imaginary launch pad. Let's go again, and this time stick to what's written. Sorry, but that's not going to happen. What? Oh! Uh, security! Security intruder on the set! Get him, Miz! Oh, I can't wait to show this to my wife. Maybe I can win her love again. This is the realest thing I've ever seen. Danger. The danger is palpable. Get that guy off my set. I always wanted to say that. I cannot work in these unsafe conditions. Then maybe you should talk to your friend, henchman number five. You started all this. You know what? I'm going to my trailer, and I'm not coming out until you're recast. Don't look at me! Okay, that's lunch. Miz, I appreciate you taking the time to have me on your show so we can set the record straight. Because the truth is, I shouldn't be here tonight in this crap basket of a town. No offense. I should be in majestic Vancouver, British Columbia, filming Rank and File 4. But unfortunately, my co-star, and I use that term loosely, let his personal feelings against my friend, The Miz, boil over. And now 200 crew members are out of work. That's right. I'm sorry to inform you that the production on Rank and File 4 has been temporarily shut down. And unless we come up with a solution, the shutdown could be permanent. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're blaming all of this on me? I'm not the one who snuck on set like a crazy stalker and attacked the star of the movie. In fact, I have it on good authority from a security guard that you were the one who let Miz on set. So if anything, this whole mess is your fault. I would never do that to my crew. They're like family. Sure, I might forget their names or not let them make eye contact with me, but that's the exact same relationship I have with my siblings. Guys, guys, what if I told you I can make this act of injustice disappear without involving producers or agents or lawyers? How do you propose we do that? By settling who gets the part in a match at SummerSlam. But it won't be any typical match you've seen before. This will be an action-packed summer blockbuster. The rank and file four script will be suspended above the ring and whoever can climb a ladder and retrieve it first gets the starring role once and for all. This will be the premiere of the lights, camera, action ladder match. 
Sequels are tough to pull off. But me beating you for the part a second time is going to be way more entertaining than the first go around. And since we're in the spirit of making movie themed matches, I have another pitch for you. How about we give everyone a preview of the coming attraction to SummerSlam? Me and Red versus you and Brooklyn tonight on Raw. You'd all love to see me compete inside a WWE ring, wouldn't you? Well, too bad, because it's not gonna happen. I'm an elite MMA fighter and Hollywood star. This isn't my arena. Fair enough. But if it's not your arena, then why don't you get the hell out? I will not stand here and allow you to insult my esteemed guest. So, if you want a sneak preview match, then you got it. But it will be you and Red taking on me and my beautiful wife, Maurice. That's fine. Now that I'm a movie star, I get how it works. When it comes time for an action scene, you take out the lead actress and bring in the lower paid, less talented stunt double. As they say in Hollywood, ciao. This is such an intriguing matchup, but you have to wonder if Red was just a little bit disappointed. She didn't have the opportunity to get her hands on Brooklyn Von Braun. Honestly, I think Red's lucky that didn't happen, because from what I heard about their audition dust-up, Red's no match for Brooklyn. Harsh impact. A running swanton. When Monday Night Raw comes to your town, do us a favor. Make sure you show up to be a part of the longest running weekly episodic television show in history. Oh, again! She is just dominant right now. Yes, yeah, something lit a fire under her and she is going strong. Very unique vibe for this mixed tag team match, that's for sure. It's not your traditional tag team encounter. Ooh, what impact. Oh, look at it. Scoop slam. She's feeling the hurt here. Yeah, she's got a long way to go before she should be thinking about a pinfall victory. It looks like it might all be over for the team of Maurice and Miz. What is that? I think it's footage from Red and Brooklyn's audition fight. It certainly got Red's attention. And scene. French Kiss DDT. Maurice capitalizes on Red being distracted and pulls off the upset. What a huge win for the It Couple. Oh, the timing of that footage playing was certainly no accident. It looked like Red was about to put Maurice away. I think there's your answer on who played the footage. That was a coordinated effort among those three. Hey, it's always smart to have a backup plan. I've been telling you that for years, Saxton. We've seen plenty of ladder matches in WWE history, but none quite like this where the script for the action film Rank and File 4 has been suspended above the ring in a briefcase. Whoever climbs the ladder and retrieves the script first will win both the match and the starring role. It's a travesty of justice that Miz even has to go through something like this to get a role that should have already been his. He's one of the greatest actors of our time. I don't know about that, but I do know that this lights, camera, action ladder match is going to be a smash hit with audiences and critics worldwide. Saxton, why don't you treat this like we're at the movies? No talking. He's one step ahead there. Great technical know-how on display. Wow. Elbow! Oh. 
He is efficient and dangerous with his offense thus far. He's feeling good about himself, that's for sure. Unbreaker! The Miz looking a little bit shaken. He planned for this and can still rally. When The Miz won the WWE Championship in 2010, he christened himself the most must-see champion in WWE history. Even more surprising than that win was that he lived up to the moniker. I don't think he wants to be in that corner, Byron. Yeah, but he's not moving, Michael. Oh, what an uppercut. Saw that one coming. Trey hammers Miz in the corner. It's Brooklyn Von Braun. I had a feeling she'd get involved tonight. Do you blame her? She wants Miz to win so she can have a legitimate co-star in the movie. And here's Red to stop Brooklyn from spoiling this match. This is pure jealousy. Red couldn't beat Brooklyn in the audition, so now she's taking it out on her. That's ridiculous. She's only out here to help her friend, Trey. And it appears she's been able to accomplish that. Red has neutralized Brooklyn as they head to the back. Cut, cut. There's no cutting in this match. Byron, you brought up the most must-see champion in WWE history. The Miz got that name by appearing on countless talk shows, red carpet interviews in the wake of his win, all while defending the title on multiple occasions. Yeah, don't forget that part, fellas. Miz held that title for 160 days, successfully defending the WWE Championship against the likes of Randy Orton, Jerry the King Lawler, and oh, yeah, that John Cena guy in the main event of WrestleMania. Look at to steal a win here! Yeah, this is highway robbery. Hey, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Yeah, but when you miss a shot, you don't usually fall 15 feet. Oh, saw it coming. He stuck all the way from the top. He misses the mark. Reverses. Can he make him pay? DDT! The Miz definitely in a tough spot now. This ladder match is wearing him out fast. He's setting it up right where he wants it. Setting it up now. What kind of strategy do you employ in this kind of ladder match? He's looking to bring this one to the outside where things can get ugly in an instant. This is just going to be physical. There's no other way to describe it. Back in the ring again. This match is being televised around the world in 18 languages and in over 110 countries. Here he goes, guys, looking for the win. I think it's going to happen right now. Getting closer. Climbing up the ladder. Oh, and the ladder finds the mark. Gonna be tough to bounce back from that one. Going for the win here. And the victory here would be so huge. Big time. Life changing. Both of these competitors have so much resolve, it's going to take a minor miracle to keep one of them down. Oh, the reversal by The Miz. Close line over the top row. All the way to the floor. Masterful execution by The Miz. There's the knee strike. He's lost some of his win now. Not a situation he wants to be in when he still has a ladder to climb. 
The Miz showing how A-listers do things out there. Oh, look out, heading to the ladder now. Oh no, an almost lifeless Cole. This is gonna be big. Look out. The Miz was able to get out of the way there. Oh, incredible height. Stable that looks, Michael. Going all the way up. Look at the height! Frog splash! Heads up the ladder. Big opportunity for him here. Can he pull it down? I think so. Nothing stands in the... No matter how you feel about anyone's acting skills, this is a huge night for Trey. He beat a future Hall of Famer in a pressure-filled, high-stakes ladder match at the biggest party of the summer. As far as I'm concerned, Trey deserves the role and our respect. Oh, that's nice. But as of now, I'm officially boycotting rank and file four. Sorry, Brooklyn. I'll just have to catch you in your next film. Hey, thanks for the assist out there. And by the way, now that I've officially got the part again, it's not too late for me to pull some strings and get you a roll. I think I'm cool with sitting this one out. All right. Well, the door's open if I'm back for rank and file five. Although I heard R-Truth pitch the producers on making it an office drama with him as a star, and it's under strong consideration, so we'll see. Oh, by the way, I left tickets for my real parents again. No luck, though. Still doing that, huh? Yep. And who knows, maybe if they're not WWE fans, then they'll see me in the movie. Can't hurt. Yeah, I guess. Hey, before you go out for your match, you mind signing my script? <laughs> sure. May you always have a happy Thanksgiving. See? It is catching on. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Busy night for you, huh? I mean, if I were defending my title against an opponent like me, I might be just a little more focused on my match. Don't worry. I'm more than capable of helping a friend out and beating you in the same night. Well, while you've been off auditioning for movies and getting in fights with your old high school bully, I've been training for our match. You see, it's become a bit personal for me. You might even say I feel disrespected by your attitude. It's like everything's easy for you, huh? You show up in WWE and just waltz your way to the top? Well, that makes me angry. Didn't you do the exact same thing? <laughs> not even close. You're right. It's not the same. Because I didn't have a famous dad to help me get here. I've earned everything I have. There it is again. Disrespect. And speaking of that, Beating me is not even on your list, as far as I can tell. I only put my goals on there, not things I expect to do. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, after tonight, you'll have a new goal to put on your list. Take back the Raw Women's Championship from Charlotte Flair. Can you believe they're all the way up to rank and file seven now? No, I can't. I thought they would have stopped making them after your performance. Wow, didn't realize this was a roast. No, it's just that you definitely had some interesting priorities earlier in your career. First, it was the movie. Then you were obsessed with getting your own action figure. It was on the list since day one. Yeah, which made you super jealous when I got one before you did. Remember this? Are you still a little bit jealous? No. Are you sure? I think you're exaggerating how I reacted. <laughs> really? Because that's not how I remember it. Check it out! My first action figure! Pretty cool, right? Awesome. 
They really nailed the detail on your face. You didn't even really look at it. Yeah, well, you know what they say about action figures. Once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Literally no one says that. Wait, are you jealous because you don't have one yet? No, I'm fine. Okay, look, I get it. This was more your thing, but it's just an action figure. It's more than that to me. Think of how you felt when I won a title in WWE before you did. It's like that, but ten times worse. Comparing titles to action figures might be a little extreme. But if it makes you feel any better, I'll wait and let you cross it off our list whenever you get one. No, it's fine. Cross it off. You earned it. I see you got your first action figure. We've had like 30 now, so it's kind of boring at this point. Where's yours? I think he didn't get one. <laughs> well, that's awkward. I think even like Tom Phillips got one. He doesn't really deserve it. <laughs> well, that's true. He's lucky even to be on the roster. <clears throat> Sorry, we got sidetracked with a private conversation that had absolutely nothing to do with you. But since apparently you don't have an action figure, we like to give you ours. Happy Rusev Day! Do you think he heard what we said? Who cares? He's a loser. <laughs> I heard he freaking jerks, and if I had an action figure of my own, I'd team up with Red's action figure to kick your action figure stupid plastic butts. Or even better, how about we take them down in real life? Huh? Oh, yeah. I guess we could do that. WWE superstars end up facing each other in the ring for a variety of reasons. Tonight, Red and Trey are squaring off with Rusev and Lana because of, well, action figures. But from what I hear, Trey was throwing a tantrum because he didn't get an action figure and then was apparently offended when Rusev and Lana tried to graciously give him theirs. Hey, I can relate to Trey. I mean, you guys have them, but when am I going to get my own action figure? Never. Never ever, because nobody wants that, Saxton. She seems to have gained the advantage here. Yeah, I love the effort here, but she'd better hope she can sustain it. In the corner now! Oh, heavy duty right hand. Not what she was looking for. Keep your eyes on this one. All the way from the top rope. Oh, nasty impact. Ooh, what a jawbreaker. Straight punch. When Rusev and Lana beat Bailey and Elias during the mixed match challenge, I was shocked. Mostly because I looked forward to a winner's duet with Bailey and Elias, but also because it was Lana's first win. Lights out, DDT connects. A running swanton! A oh, foot just stomping down! You're watching Monday Night Raw! Michael, I don't agree with your sentiment about wanting to hear Elias and Bailey in concert, but I agree that nobody thought Lana could pin Bailey. After all, she hadn't won a match in WWE like ever. No, when you have a tag partner and trainer like the super athlete Rusev, it's just a matter of time before you reach the top of your division. Frankly, I was shocked they didn't win the entire mixed match challenge. Over and over again. In off the tag. Ah, oh, kick right in the gut. Listen, we've all seen enough of Rusev's body of work here in WWE to know that human beings will be manhandled when the bell rings. Rusev's mission is simple. 
It's to crush. Great evasion. Oh, flying forearm. That'll turn your lights out. Innovative offensive display there. Now oh, look at this. Abdominal stretch. It's locked in. This is a great way to wear down your opponent. How'd he do that? I don't know, Michael, but good thing. I don't think he could have taken much more of that. And there's the reversal from Rusev. An impressive series of moves. Big, big backdrop. We've seen Rusev take the term cruelty to new levels. The Bulgarian brute gets a look in his eyes, and we know he's a few minutes away from tossing an opponent around like a bag of garbage. I feel like Rusev doesn't need a contract or to have a match to cause someone severe physical harm. If Rusev does not like how someone even looks at him, Rusev can maul that individual and leave them seriously injured. done he picks up the win this win is exactly why so many superstars hope their number in all seriousness even though it wasn't as important to me it was pretty cool when not long after that you got your first action figure and crossed it off our list but the fact we had different priorities is partly what made this work because let's be honest if we've been competing for the same things I'm not sure we could have been friends you were just always so driven to be the best maybe but it's not like I was only focused on individual goals. Like, what about when we went to SmackDown Live and I ended up teaming with someone who was a great influence and mentor to me? I'm talking about Mickey James, of course! Stand up and take a bow, Mickey, you deserve it. You fought hard, but it just wasn't your night. Let's face it, it hasn't been your night in a long time. Now, as general manager of SmackDown Live, it's my job to present a cutting-edge product, which means constantly introducing new talent to keep our brand fresh and exciting. But we can't add new talent without making subtractions. So I'm sorry, Mickey, but based on your recent performance, you can either announce your retirement, or unfortunately, I'll have to make that decision for you. Wait, so you're basically forcing her out? She deserves better than that. I understand where you're coming from. But like I said, this is bigger than one person. It's about protecting the brand. There would be no brand without women like Mickey James. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, and maybe I've lost a step. Maybe it's just time to hang it up. No! You can't just accept this. There has to be another way. Well, there is one other option, but it would just be delaying the inevitable. Mickey can continue competing on SmackDown Live, as long as she wins. But the very next match she loses is her last. She'll do it. I will. All right. Good luck. Look, I appreciate the support, but with my record as of late, I don't think I'll be sticking around too long. Or maybe you will with me by your side. Or what do you mean? Big Show didn't say you had to win singles matches. Are you sure you want to set aside your own goals to do this? There's nothing I'd rather do than protect your legacy by sending you out on a winning streak. And one last title run. Win women's tag team championships with Mickey James. Welcome everyone to the most iconic talk show ever, Iconic Talk, with your hosts, the Iconics. 
We just said iconic so many times. You said it again. I think we just set a record. Speaking of records, I want to remind everyone that we are now the longest running women's tag team champions ever from Australia. They're also the only women's tag team champions from Australia. Which brings us to my favorite segment of Iconic Talk. It's time for Why Australia, Australia is better. better. This is the part of the show where we educate our audience on different aspects of Australian culture and explain why Australia is better. Okay, what do we have this week? The great sport of cricket. Which has nothing to do with filthy little insects. No, it's actually a sport that is very popular in Australia. Think of it like a way better version of your horrible, dull baseball. To further educate you on this superior sport, let's go over the laws of cricket, shall we? There are only 42 of them. Shouldn't take long. Law one, a cricket team consists of 11 players, including a captain. That's a great law, one of my favorites. Now, law two. Hey, what are these two doing out here? There were still 41 laws to go. I wanted to learn more about cricket. I think you were the only one. Law two. The Iconics should never be allowed to have a talk show as it'll put everyone watching to sleep. That's not an actual law. Yeah, don't listen to her. Why are you two even out here? It's very rude to interrupt someone's talk show. I recommend you go back and watch this segment we did on Manners. We're here because we want a tag team championship match. So you two are a team now. <laughs> what are you calling yourselves? Red and grey. <laughs> because Mickey's so old, get it? Hilarious, she really is a fossil. You've never even teamed before, so what makes you think you deserve a shot at our titles? Maybe because eight years ago in Calgary, I beat you in my very first match, and I've only gotten better since then. Way better. Oh, okay, so you're saying since a long time ago, I felt bad for my pathetic opponent and basically took the night off because I was freezing, that a decade later, when that pathetic opponent raised her ugly head with an elderly partner, they deserve a tag title opportunity? Makes sense. That was sarcasm. The answer is no. <laughs> if you think that we need to prove ourselves as a team, then we'll do it right now in a non-title match. If we win, we get a championship match. And if you win, you end my career. That whole career ending stipulation is enticing. Yeah, I forgot about that. It would be nice to put her out to pasture. We'll do it. But only after we finish teaching everyone about cricket. Law three. Never interrupt the Iconics. The Iconics viciously attack Red and Mickey with those cricket bats. And rightfully so, they violated law three. Red and Mickey are going to be at a severe disadvantage going into this match with so much at stake. If you're just joining us, this is a nine title match with the stipulation that if Red and Mickey can defeat the Iconics, they earn a shot at their tag team titles. However, if the Iconics win, Mickey James' career will be over. And Red and Mickey are clearly not 100% after that brutal attack by the Iconics. Look, no one wants to see a pioneer like Mickey James have her career come to an end, but it's gonna happen sooner or later, and I have a feeling it'll be sooner, as in tonight, at the hands of the tag team champions. Over the years, Columbus has become known for being an extremely electric crowd, and this one is no different. Oh, man. It's starting to come together in a big way. Yeah, she's able to tap into an energy source few others can. Oh, a step up in Zagari. Oh, kick 
right to the gut. She's beginning to flag a little. She's putting up quite a fight here, Cole, but despite that, now is probably a good time to go for the tag. These competitors are giving everything they have. I love SmackDown. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when Peyton Royce walks out wearing that iconic T-shirt, you can hear an audible groan from the crowd. I haven't noticed, but I'm sure they're just jealous, Cole. The fact of the matter is, when you look and perform like Peyton Royce does, you should absolutely have a high opinion of yourself. Running leg drop! Elbow drop. Piercing. the apron, lifting it up into the ring. Bam! Suplex! Oh, leg sweep. Nicely done. Mickey James seizing the moment that time. That's absolute power with the vertical suplex. The fatigue is setting in for her. The good news is that if it gets too out of control, she has her partner she can tag in while she catches her breath in the corner. Down on the neck breaker. Boom. A leg drop. Elbow drop. Piercing. Ah. Oh, it didn't go as planned there. Look at this. Snap suplex. Struggling to get to the corner here. Why not make it, Michael? Oh! Again! When it comes to Peyton Royce's opinion of herself, I partially agree with Corey. Yes, she should have self-confidence, but to call herself iconic? I don't know. That seems like a word that should be reserved for the likes of, I don't know, Tristratus and Mae Young. Who are you to decide who's an icon and who's not, Saxton? If Peyton Royce wants to call herself iconic, that's exactly what she should do. Period. Oh, what a counter. Not again. One of these competitors is eventually going to have to gain the upper hand. Tagged in. When you talk about great tag teams, we can go all the way back to teams like the Tolos brothers, Stevens and Patterson, Stevens and Bachwinkle, the Texas Outlaws, the Briscoes, the Blackjacks, the Andersons, and the list goes on and on. When you're part of a tag team, the two partners have to travel together, train together, eat together, and be completely in sync with one another. A running swanton! This match is wearing her down. She really needs to make a tag here, guys. There's no way she can continue like this and expect to win the match. There's just no way. Tag team competition dates back all the way to the early 1900s. Corey, you mentioned some of the classic duos from sports entertainment's incredible history. In today's WWE, the tag team scene has never been more competitive. I don't know who has the edge when it comes to talent. If it's Raw or SmackDown Live, I think it's too close to call, but all the teams truly think and act as one unit. I agree, Michael. Teams such as the Usos, American Alpha, Anderson and Gallows, the New Day, the Hardy Bulls, Cesaro and Sheamus, I could be here all day naming championship caliber teams. And when the tag team scene is that competitive, you don't know which team will be wearing the gold. A lot of pride on the line here in this tag team encounter, but only two of these competitors will end up getting what they came for. The win. Really a back suplex. And Peyton Royce is fading fast here, guys. This is bad, guys. I don't even think she has enough power to get to her corner to make the tag. What a great job by Peyton Royce to take advantage. Over and over again. Possible disaster there. 
Oh, it's not going to be pretty. Situations like this usually don't end very pleasantly. And just like that, it's all over. Oh, man. Shoulders down. It's over. It's all over. Here are your winners. And that's a nice win for these two here tonight. What we just saw there was a doctorate class in tag team competition. That was awesome. And considering our lack of experience together, I'd say we make a pretty good team. I agree. I mean... You know what, I just want to say thank you for doing this. I could be sitting at home right now, but instead we have a chance to win the Tag Team Championships. And even if my career does end, this is a heck of a way to go out. Before you celebrate too much, we just found out your tag title match will be taking place on our home turf. That's right, in our great country, in front of our fans at Super Showdown. It doesn't matter, we'll beat you anywhere. Oh, you should also know it's going to be an Australian rules tag match, which are the most iconic rules. What does that even mean? It means it'll be no disqualification, tornado tag, or willy willy tag, as we say down under. Hey, Mickey, you should pack an extra week of clothes, you know, so you can go on holiday in Australia after we end your career? We'll call our grandparents and see if they know of any good senior resorts. <laughs> <laughs> You have to believe the Iconics have a major advantage here tonight at Super Showdown, competing in front of their home country fans in an Australian Rules Tag Team Championship match. And don't forget, Red and Mickey have the added pressure of Mickey's career being on the line. If they lose, this chapter of Mickey's life is officially over. That's all true, but we shouldn't ignore the fact that Red has added win women's tag team championships with Mickey James to her list. And she has a very successful track record when it comes to achieving her goals. From behind. Oh, what impact. She is just too quick. Got out of the way in a hurry. Reverses, can she take advantage? Well scouted reversal there. Larian. Ooh, what impact. Ooh, treading all over their opponent. Peyton Royce was able to get out of the way there. Interesting, there's the high knee right between the shoulders. We had it scouted. Top block. The champ taking their share of hits now. Split leg drop. Going up top. Big boot. Strong oh. kick. My goodness. Bringing it back into the ring. Red goes for the Irish whip, but gets sent into the corner instead. And now here come the Iconics, pouring it on in front of their home crowd. This does not look good for Red and Mickey, and by extension, Mickey's career. What are the Iconics doing? Oh, I think it's time for a game of cricket. Red and Mickey have other plans. This is a bit of revenge for what took place before their match on SmackDown Live. And since Australian rules is no disqualification, it's perfectly legal. Oh, what impact! Look, Mickey James is on the attack now. The champ getting put to the test here. Gets her again. Man, she really knows how to handle herself, huh? Oh, what impact. Ooh. Harsh impact. What a great job by Peyton Royce to take advantage. Oh, 
Just ruthless. Billy Kay's on the attack now. Whack! Well, that gives new meaning to have a seat. Proving tough to catch. He returns the favor there. Rolling neck snap. And another reversal. Seems like we're back where we began, Michael. Man, what a slam. Hook them up. Uh-oh, uh-oh, this will be... And there's the save. Textbook vertical. Cover by the challenger. One, two, and the seven. shoulders come up. Gonna take more than that. Oh, no, this isn't gonna end well. Oh, my gosh. Surfboard leg breaker. She's really relying on that object a lot now. And I can't say that I blame her. Oh, nasty impact. Oh! Peyton Royce was able to get out of the way there. And it's Mickey James making the moves. Looking stunned. Looking rocked. Oh, spiking DDT. Penny predicament. Two new champion. No, oh, that was so close. The size of this girl's part is simply immeasurable. Shoulders down. Championship on the line. One, two, oh, how resilient was that? Wow, I thought this was over. Billy Kay showing such creativity. Whack. Michael, that gives new meaning to have a seat. Got him. And Michael, that chair. Cover for the championship. One, two, three. Not only has Red Hell Mickey James ward off retirement, they're now the new women's tag team champions. To win this match under the pressure they faced and do it in enemy territory under the Iconics rules is truly impressive. Honestly, I think a lot of credit goes to Red and her list. Someone said it before the match, that list is a powerful motivational tool for Red. Yeah, that someone was me, Corey. Nah, it couldn't have been you, it probably was Cole. And that's how Mickey James went from being a hero and mentor of mine to more than that. She was now my tag team partner and more importantly, my friend. Oh, that's nice. But aren't you skipping over a pretty important part? How about we move on? Don't you want to talk about when you were on the cover of WWE 2K25? I do, but hang on a second. Earlier you put me on blast for having some trivial goals. So now it's my turn to call you out for a time when you let the list steer you down a questionable path. This is a night to remember our careers, good and bad. Fine. If you want to talk about it so much, then you tell the story. Okay. After they became tag team champions, it turned everything around for Mickey. She even ended up earning a SmackDown Live Women's Championship opportunity against Kyrie Sane. Mickey went on to defeat Kyrie Sane, giving her two championships and continuing her incredible winning streak to avoid retirement. I feel like you've been a little off lately. You're moody, quick to lash out, overly judgmental about my decisions. It all sounds like typical me. Maybe those weren't the best examples, but I've known you long enough to realize when something's bothering you. Well, to be honest, I'm kind of getting impatient. I mean, teaming with Mickey has been fun. But I never thought it would last this long, and I definitely didn't see her singles title run happening. Now I'm basically waiting for someone to beat her so I can go after the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. I've been dying to cross that off. Some might say you're a bit too focused on the list. Who's some? Are you some? Look, if you want my advice, I see two ways for you to get what you want. But the first option wouldn't be very honorable. What do you mean? If you and Mickey were to somehow lose your tag titles, then Mickey would be forced to retire and vacate her women's title, leaving you free to pursue it. Option number two, the more straight up way of doing things, would be for you to tell Mickey exactly how you feel and challenge her to a match for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship, potentially crossing that off the list. But if you beat her, you'd also lose the tag titles and worse, end the career of your idol slash friend. I don't really love either option. This business forces you to make some tough decisions. But 
At least you're not choosing between competing in a tag title match or saving your mangled ear like McFoley once had to do. No, but if losing my ear was option three, I'd think I'd take it. The alternative is just waiting around for something to happen, and who knows how long that could take. You're right. I guess I should... Hey, Mickey. I need to talk to you about something. It's kind of personal, sorry. We'll catch up later. What's going on? Is everything okay? Yeah, well, not really. It's just lately... Ugh, I'll just come out and say it. I want your title, and I know what that means for you and for us, but I don't think I can sit back any longer. You know what? I was waiting for this moment. You were? Look, I, I know who you are, what you're made of, what got you here. You're driven to be the very best, and I knew that being tag team champions would only satisfy you for so long. So you don't hate me? No, I get it. I actually respect you for your honesty. I can think of a couple other ways this could have gone down. But if I beat you, it's all over. If it's going to come to an end, and it will, sooner rather than later, I want you to be the one that does it. Besides, none of this would have even happened if it wasn't for you. But with all of that said, I've come too far to just roll over. If you face me for my title, you better be ready for a fight. <laughs> you know me. I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs>